Hi, my name is Yun Cho and we are Team 29. Today we are going to talk about lane detection for autonomous driving. This is the order of our presentation. First, we are going to talk about motivation and our brief introduction. Then, we are going to define our problem task, data set, and model technique we have used. Finally, we are going to present our results and compare it with the baseline model. So let's start off with the motivation. As you know, autonomous driving system is one of the most widely researched topics in neural networks and deep learning. Numerous studies and research have been made, but there is no complete, perfect autonomous driving system as of yet. However, there are several successful attempts under restricted environments <coughs> have been made. And one example is mine clearing operation conducted by the United States Army in Afghanistan. When it comes to autonomous driving system, numerous factors must be considered. One is detecting objects, whether, move, whether objects are moving, very, moving very fast or still. Another one is lanes and the ability to detect lanes under different weather conditions, different times of day, or even the number of lanes. In this research project, we focus on lane detection. The data set we have used is two simple lane data set. And according to this paper, it is the only large scale data set for testing deep learning methods on the lane detection task. And it is accessible through the link given in the references. It is divided into training set and testing set. And it is contained with wide variety of clips. Several examples include two lanes, three lanes and four lanes or more, highway roads, different weather conditions and different times of day. Hello everyone, I'm Shashank, and I'm going to, to discuss about the models and techniques used in the project. So, as you can see, our project uses a lane net model, and we're treating the lane detection as an instance segmentation problem. Previous projects on lane detection have used a binary segmentation, but binary segmentation has some issues. Like uh, one of them is uh, it is limited to fixed number of lanes. Another one is uh, it is not able to cope up when the lane changes. And that's where instant segmentation comes into play. Our, mo our model consists of two parts. The first one is segmentation and the second one is clustering. So this is our model. We have an input image and we have an encoder that divides into two branches. The first one is binary segmentation and the second one belongs to instant segmentation. Then we form a, form a pixel embedding from both of these branches. We do a clustering of them. And finally we create an output and you can see the mask output over there. Uh, now I'm going to do, discuss about segmentation. We are using two kinds of segmentation over here. The first one is binary segmentation. Uh, it is a technique that detects for each pixel the object category it belongs to. The segmentation branch of a lane net outputs a binary segmentation map. And in our neural network, the ground truth points are connected together, forming a connected line per lane. And that's how we are able to detect a particular lane. The second one is instance segmentation problem. It's the same as binary segmentation, but it dives a bit deeper. It identifies for each pixel the object instance it belongs to. I'm going to explain it further using the following example. You can see this is the original image and uh, uh, using binary segmentation in the second image, we are able to uh, identify the different difference between a chair and a table. But using instant segmentation, we are able to individually identify every chair, which we are not able to do using binary segmentation. Uh, so this instance segmentation is the second branch of our lane detection model. And we have used the encoder decoder model to get the logistic corresponding to these segmentation. What I mean by that is we're using the encoder to create a CNN convolution neural network. Then we are using the decoder. And what decoder does is basically uses this encoder and it creates a map, map of pixels for each of the lanes, which is further used to identify the lanes in a, in a particular image. Last is clustering. After decoding and using the result from binary and instant segmentation, we compute the lane embedding for each, pixel, each lane pixel. We make sure that difference between the pixel embedding belonging to the same lane is small. What I mean by that is uh, if there are two pixels on a single lane, the distance between them should be small. And the difference between pixel embedding to different lanes is maximized. So if there are two pixels that belong to different lanes, their, their, dif their, their distance should be maximized. So uh, we, we are going to have two different clusters for two different pixels that are belonging to two different lane and two pixels belonging to same, same lane will lie in a single cluster. Pixel embedding of the same lane will cluster together forming a unique cluster per lane. 
So as I said before, the, the pixels belonging to the same lane will clutter together and they will form a same cluster. That's it from my side. Hi, um, so let us now take, uh, take a look at our results now. Next. So this is our output result for one of the test images. Um, the first one on the top left is the actual input image. Um, the image on the left and the right bottom are the primary segmentation and instant segmentation models output images respectively. The image on the top right is our final output image and we'll go over the final image once again a bit later. Next slide. So now for the accuracy, the given formula is the total number of correct points divided by the total number of clean points. The correct point here means that the distance between the ground truth point and the output point should be within a given threshold. The pixel points for each lane in the image are specified in the data set and we have calculated the accuracy based on that. Next slide. For hyperparameter tuning, we have taken almost half of the data set due to the time constraint and with an equal distribution for all kinds of lanes. Here are the hyperparameters that we have chosen and the obtained accuracy for the given test data set is 92.83. Next slide. So now let us compare our results to the baseline. So as you can see, this is the output for our test image. And uh, here are some of the non-correct points, which also the fact that our accuracy is 92.83. Since the ground truth lines here are hand-drawn, therefore the idea of 100% accuracy is a little vague and an accuracy of 98 to 99% will work perfectly fine in the real world scenario. Next slide. So uh, here is the exact comparison of our results with the baseline, which had an accuracy of 96% and our accuracy is 92.80%. And below that, you can see the training uh, accuracy, which almost equals to uh, 100% after some epochs. Next slide. So here are some of the future improvements that we can do to our model. So we can train our model on the complete data set, firstly. Secondly, we can use transfer learning, which, may, which should give better results. Uh, we can use HNET model for the correct projection of the lanes for the II bird's eye model. We can train the model on different data sets as well, which which will also increase our increase our accuracy for sure. Next slide. So here are some of the references that we have referred to for our code and uh, the implementation part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.